Welcome to the Linux Zero to Hero series, a series published in 2022. The intent of this series is to give you increased knowledge to where you could use Linux, work on Linux servers, and possibly even pass Linux certifications. And it seems like a good place to start is to outline what Linux is and what Linux isn't. So let's begin. First off, Linux is free and open source. This means you can acquire Linux at absolutely no cost, and you can view the source code, again, for absolutely no cost, as well as make changes to the source code and say, like, build your own Linux. Linux being free is actually really important because it's the only thing like that that is free. There are instances in which you might actually pay for Linux, but really what you're paying for is the support and the software around Linux. You'll never actually pay for the kernel itself. A good example of this is Red Hat. They'll sell you the Linux distribution along with all of the software for a small fee, but if you'd like to acquire Red Hat, you can use CentOS. Linux is void of bloat by default. The Linux kernel in particular has no bloat. And then Linux distributions, they may add their software that they want, but you can always remove it. This is the case because unlike something like Windows, Linux is not highly commercialized. Linux is a great development OS. This means if you are a software engineer or developer and you're writing software, Linux is a real good choice for that. This is particularly true for web development. However, Linux would be a very bad option if you are a software developer for Microsoft products or if you want to develop software that is intended to run exclusively on Windows, then Linux is a very bad choice. The reason Linux is great for web development specifically is because most servers in the cloud are running on Linux, and this means that you're going to build software on Linux that will eventually run on Linux. Not only does this make finding compatibility problems easier, but it also makes deployments easier. Linux is an excellent platform for supercomputing applications. The main reasons it's well suited for this is due to its free and open source nature. Supercomputing tasks are usually highly specific on very specific hardware, and Linux is a good option for that. You could just imagine how cost prohibitive it would be to acquire all of the CPU licenses for Windows servers for supercomputing applications. And even in the past, before Linux was huge, it was really Unix that was the big supercomputing platform. But since Linux is big now, that has entirely taken over. I think almost 100% of the supercomputing workload is done by Linux now. Linux is good for servers in general, and this is because Linux at the very base is just a terminal. There's no graphics. Adding graphics or display manager is really something that you do optionally. Any server OS is not going to have a GUI by default. The fact that Linux is very efficient and very small means it can run more workloads for less resources. This is always good for businesses. There's also a lot of Linux server applications that are pretty well compatible with Windows environments as well. And finally, Linux is good as a base kernel. Some Linux distributions are very tiny, which means they are good candidates to be put on things like chips, TVs, phones, and other devices that you wouldn't ordinarily think would be running Linux. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if SpaceX's rockets were using Linux. Now onto what Linux isn't. Now this isn't intended to say what Linux cannot do, it's just intended to say what Linux is not good at doing. And what Linux is, in my opinion, not for. Everything on this list, of course, can be done if you try hard enough. So first, Linux is not a direct replacement for Windows. This is largely due to the software, but also due to the user experience and the overall stability of the platform. Anybody who's ever used Linux for a long period of time knows that it has a lot of quirks. Some things are weird, configuration is weird, and it's just not great for a person who wants a direct replacement for Windows. Linux is not for video games. Fortunately, the reason Linux isn't for video games has more to do with people that work on drivers and software for Linux and less about Linux itself. The first problem is that NVIDIA still kind of treats Linux as a second class citizen when it comes to drivers. The drivers are very good, but they still leave a lot to be desired and they are definitely not perfect. This means that any video gaming on Linux is immediately going to suffer from that. The second is many game studios just simply have no interest in supporting Linux at all. And then if the video game is not supported at all, then all you're left with is Wine or a Smother equivalent, which is designed to run Windows software on Linux. And your mileage may vary when it comes to this. You might have a game that runs perfectly without any problems on Linux, then you might have one that is just totally awful. Linux is not for high-end photo and video software either, and this is largely for the same reason that it's not for video games. Software vendors just do not produce this kind of software for Linux. This is true of stuff like Adobe and others. But at least we have Blender on Linux, so that's good. Some of the high-end photo and video software I do assume runs on Wine and other tools, but I think a lot of it does not. Linux isn't for very specific or obscure hardware. The Linux kernel at its core is really just a collection of hardware drivers designed to connect software to hardware. And so if you're using very specific hardware and they don't have Linux drivers, it's probably not going to work. 
The only exception here would be if that piece of hardware is using a protocol that is similar to another piece of hardware, and then a generic driver might work for that. But for very specific stuff, that's usually not the case. Linux is not for business tools and business software. Although there's been great strides that have been made to make these tools and software working fine on Linux and compatible with Windows environments, the reality is it's just not the same as Windows, and a lot of big companies and big enterprises, they're going to expect to control all of their infrastructure using entirely Windows solutions. And so if their Linux deployments cannot attach to this Windows infrastructure, then it can't be used all that well. And then finally, Linux is not for the average user. The likelihood of a long-time Windows user just picking up Linux and just using it as if nothing changed is pretty much zero. Now if the average user just needs to say check email and browse the web and do just very basic things, then Linux might actually work. They might not actually even notice a difference. But when that average user needs to do anything specific or install their very specific piece of Windows software, then it's probably going to stop working for their purpose. Another thing that will kill the experience for the average user is when anything at all goes wrong and then they don't know how to fix it. I still believe one day we'll see widespread adoption of Linux for even average users, but until then, it's still a very specific OS for a very specific purpose for a very specific set of people. And that's it for the video. If you have any questions or comments or feedback about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave those below in the comments. And also tell me if I got everything right. What do you think Linux is and isn't? As always, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.